Hey guys, welcome back to another episode on how the hack. And today we'll be looking at SQL injection that we can run against web services. So web services allow standardized messages to be sent between applications without having to care so much about the underlying infrastructure or the languages that those platforms are built on. And that's the beauty of web services and the creation of application programming interfaces. And a lot of websites, we can actually find that they could be having web services that are interfacing the database systems, which has the records of usernames, credit card details, passwords, and so on. So how can we uncover web services? So today we're here at Mutila Day 2. And what we can see here, of course, Mutila Day 2 is a vulnerable web application platform for us to learn our ethical hacking tutorials on. So I'm going to zoom in a little more so it's easier for you to see. And they have... I'll rightly declare the web services on the left side. So we have the simple object access protocol as well as the representational state transfer, all right, REST APIs. And we'll be looking at REST APIs in today's section, all right? So we'll look at SQL injection and we can go ahead and click under user account management. Or in order to also uncover web services, we can utilize some tools that could help us scan through the directories that are available, which may contain some of these web services. So I can use DIRB. All right, followed by the IP address 192.168.0.118 slash mutiliday, followed by slash. And I can go ahead and hit enter on this to look at the discovery of all these directory systems, okay? So this helps us very quickly uncover possible directories, web services that we can look at. So I will sc scroll all the way back to the top and we can look at this discovery of directories. So we have Ajax, we have classes, documentation. And of course, right here, we have web services. So I can do a right click and I can click under open link. And over here we have, again, we have rest, we have soap and test. And of course, in this case, when you click under rest, we have the ws-user-account.php, which we are currently interacting with. So right here, this is the rest that we can actually work on. And majority of the time, they'll be detailing down how we can actually interact with the REST web service. So in this case, they have the following, okay? So we can utilize the following to find out or get information back from the web browser. So in this case, when I click onto the following link, it would actually provide us the username that we have specified. So I can utilize tools like Burp Suite to actually help us look in more details about what kind of injection that we can run against the web service. So I'll go ahead under about preferences and I'll click under network settings, settings, and I'll enable manual proxy configuration. Click OK on that. And I'll go ahead and enter and start a burp suite. Okay, so this will begin running burp suite community edition. So we can select temporary project, click next, use burp defaults, click start burp. So you ensure that you go under the proxy tab. So I'll use magnifier so that it is easier for you to see. So click on a proxy tab and ensure that intercept is on. So I'll go back to Firefox. And in this case, I will go ahead and click onto the link again. All right, and we'll get an interception from Burp Suite on the request. So I can do a right click, I can send to repeater. And under repeater, we can look at the information that we're sending, the request that we're sending over into the web service. So in this case, we have the get method and we have the link and we have the username. So I can click send. And on the right side, we can get under the body, the response, all right? So this over here, we have the accounts, the username, all right? And then we have the signature of the user. Okay, so I can go ahead and enter some other names. Say I can enter admin to try to probe the server and look if such account actually exists inside the system. So I can go ahead and click send. And on the body of the result, on the response, we can see over here accounts, usernames, admin, and the signature information. So we can also perform because what's happening here is that the web service is interacting with the database system to pull out records and display those records on the right side for us through a web service function. So what I can do is I can change the username to say asterisk. All right, so if you go back into learning about SQL, okay, so I can go to say W3 schools. So I can say, for example, turn off the proxy tab and I can go to W3 schools about SQL. 
All right, so we have the SQL tutorial here. So SQL stands for Structured Query Language, and W3 Schools has a full list of learnings that we can actually go through in terms of understanding more about Structured Query Language. Okay, so this is for us to access into database system like Microsoft SQL, MySQL, and all these databases. So what we can do is to look under SQL select. All right, so this is the select statement, and we can actually look over here. So they have an example, select asterisk. So what does asterisk means? Asterisk stands for selecting all from a table. So this is what's going on behind the scene when you query a web service that is interfacing with the database on the back end. So over here, in this case, when you do a select all statement from the table, and you can see over here, this is the retrieval of all of the data. Okay, so what we can do is they also have try it yourself. All right, so over here, we can do a select statement. All right, select all from customers and you can run SQL and they will be able to return all the results. Okay, so what we are doing here is to demonstrate what may be happening behind the scene, which is important because we're trying to understand how the web service is actually calling and executing all these queries into the database to pull out those records. So going back to Burp Suite, all you got to do is change the username to say, for example, asterisk and look at the possible return of results. So I'll go ahead and click send. And right here, as we can see, there's a following result in the body of the response. Accounts, username, admin, Adrian, John, Jeremy, Bryce, Samurai. Okay, so we can see literally all the usernames that now exist inside the system and we'll be able to more specifically narrow down our attacks. Say, for example, you're using a brute force attack instead of trying all possible username combination. In, in this case now, we actually have the list of all those usernames and there has been many exposure of web services that may be interfacing with personal data, sensitive records that allows hackers to be able to utilize those web services to actually pull out those records or even change records inside the system. So once again, I hope you learned something valuable in today's tutorial. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer any of your questions. Remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.